Okay, tonight we're going to talk about in brilliance. Um, and because it's a uh, very versatile, so for the, the next month we're going to be talking about software. So even though it's National Surger Month, <laughs> go figure. I don't plan very well, do I? There's different programs that you can get on it. The basic ones are in brilliance essentials. There's in brilliance enthusiast. And then there's the uh, Stitch Artist. Those are the three main products. And what they are is if you had the old designer's gallery embroidery works, that Essentials is the same thing as embroidery works every day. And the uh, Enthusiast is the same as the, uh, as the uh, embroidery works uh the advanced, there was an advanced one. And then there's also three levels of creator, which are the same as stitch artist. And that that's not going to change. You can, If you had bought those under the designer's gallery logo, you can use them. You can use those same serial numbers to activate your, your in brilliance. So they're, they're the same product. Both of them were both the products were developed by Brian Bailey, who used to be a baby lock dealer way back in the day, but he he was also a programmer. So he started out with Designers Gallery Studio, which did nothing but catalog. It was a cataloging system so that you could look at the designs on your screen, file them in different categories, print them onto, uh, at the time we had the palette cards, you know, the little S, big, big fat SD cards that you could load in so that's pretty much where it started and then they added color works and size works and custom works and all kinds of stuff and so now they're not associated with baby lock anymore so he's he's formed his own company and the same product is now out under in brilliance logo so but it's still the same thing basically editing is going to be your in is going to be your essentials and your enthusiast. Digitizing is going to be the same as creator, and that's full digitizing. And I'm going to, we're going to first talk about what the different products do, and then I have my software open. So, If you have the Stitch Artist one or the creator, you have the others too, right? No, you do not. They work together. They, they are not necessarily the same. No, they don't. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think I have all three of them, but it's, we should figure out how do you know what, what you have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how you, how you know what you have, let me go to over here where it says help. First, we'll talk about what, what's on this screen, but where it says help, you hit help and the second thing down says serial numbers. And down here, it tells me that I have embroidery works every, every advance and uh, embroidery works every day. And I have embroidery works creator and I have the teacher's edition, which I, those are the same serial numbers, but you'll see, let me, let me cancel. If you'll see up here, it says in brilliance up in the top left corner, it says in brilliance. Yeah, Cause if, it, if you had the old one and you hadn't updated it, you would have to go to this site okay so i'm not on his website right now so if you didn't see if if your top of your software did not say in brilliance then you would go to the main screen here and then you go to your downloads and, and over here where it says in brilliance platform you would and what it is is both of these work on the uh Design, it works on both the Mac and the Windows series. So whichever one you have is what, it, so it works on both. Very few software works on Mac or Apple or whatever. I know Palette and PE Design do not work on, on, on uh, what do you call them? Apple products. Mm. Okay, so and it says the Billions program, you just download it and then you when you bring it up, you can you can uh, put in your serial numbers and then it will work. Okay, so now, if you don't have any editing software at all, you can use this platform. It's going to give you something called Express. 
And what Express is, is their, is their free downloadable version that allows you to bring in lettering, put in the lettering, print a template. Um, not, not a whole lot you can do with it, but you can use the, uh, they have two products. There's one called, let me see. There's Express mode, and then there's a demonstration mode. If you go in here and you get in the demonstration mode, then you can download the, the Embrilliance basic program. The only thing is you just can't really save anything. The demo mode is what you would download from here. You would download it like you're doing your regular, like you were going to update it. You just don't have a serial number to put in it. But once you open it, it's just going to tell you, hey, you can play around with it and you can play around with all the different versions of their products and all the different things they have, but it doesn't let you save it. It lets you do, I think it's, it. what it lets you do is it lets you play with the essentials, the enthusiast, all of the uh, stitch artist, aka creator, all three levels of it and something called Alpha Tricks and Density Repair Kit. Then there is also something called an Express Mode, which is installed. It's their free version of the software. It's a different site that you would load something down from. It's not, they're two different platforms. The Express Mode will allow you to put in BX lettering. You can add the BX files and you can essentially do lettering with it. And that's really about all it's going to do. What I'll do is I will put on the both the, the YouTube and the Facebook site the links to get those downloads. What the, uh, the demo version does, it allows you to do lettering. It allows you to merge two files together. It allows you to imp import from library designs, and that'll make more sense later. It's going to let you set preferences. It's going to show you a sewing simulator, and it comes with 12 fonts. Okay, and then if you have a product that some people just buy something called Alpha Tricks. And what Alpha Tricks does is there's no sewing simulator, but it's got all different kinds of lettering that you, you can do. Lettering inside of envelopes and do all kinds of pretty neat stuff. It add, lets you add embroidery files that you have because in the years before, you had to buy uh, an alphabet. And you had to load in a letter one at a time, right? You didn't just keep putting them in one at a time until you got the words you wanted to write. Well, what this Alpha Tricks does, it allows you to add keyboard lettering. In other words, you can take those files and you can map them to a keyboard stroke fairly easily so that when you bring up your font, instead of picking one letter at a time, you just key it in as, as normal. And then it allows you to mirror, resize, but it doesn't do stitch recalculation. Okay. I, I, this is their site and what it tells them. In fact, right now, see, it, it's cheap. It's $139 versus $400 for everybody else's. Um, and what it allows you to do is this is the same thing as embroidered, is a designer's gallery. Embroidery works every day. It's the same thing as that. And so what it does, it's actually editing software. And here I'll show you the things it does. Okay, it has the sewing simulator, which is nice. <laughs> it allows you to edit stitch files. And here's what the screen looks like. It's fairly simple. And we'll go through ours and we'll go through it a little more detail after we just go through, through a little bit of this. Okay, you can edit your stitch files. You can put in some lettering. It comes with uh, 14 different fonts. So here's, and what's nice about this is that this ties directly into the creator or the stitch artist software. So they, in fact, I, a lot of times I can't tell what's really doing it, the embroidery works or, or the creator because they work so seamlessly. I don't know when, I, I don't have to switch back and forth. It allows you to merge merge two designs together, even if they're in zip format. You can resize it with sti stitch recalculation. So like if a stitch, 
uh, if a design has, say, a thousand stitches, you can make it twice the size and it might have 2,000 stitches. It'll recalculate it. What it won't do is that if the original design does not have underlayment, which you can build a scaffold that you can put your, your embroidery stitches on top, if it didn't have it in the first place, it won't add it. So you would have to, there, but there's things you could do to fix that too. Okay, then there's, you can resize, uh, like I said, we can resize things. You can colorize things, which means you can change colors of any element in there. You can even do what they call a color stop. Say you've got something like, see this A, B, and C. Say if this were already all one color, you could run color simulator and break this up. Saying this was a design, not necessarily lettering. But you could break this up and have half of it blue and half of it purple. But, and you can tell it where you wanted to change it. You can also convert between different brands of thread. So you don't have to just use the Brother 64. Although when I digitize, I prefer to use fewer colors because I can't, I'm always scrolling for colors that, that can be confusing. Usually I tend to digitize in the Brother 64 colors. That's enough. And then I'll just write the color chart to whatever colors I want to use, you know, so you can add lettering to your embroidery designs in multi-line, in a monogram, and in circle modes, and you can even make the letters go into a spiral, which is kind of neat. <clears throat> it includes 14 scalable object-based fonts. That's what it comes with it. You can also add BX fonts to it, as well as the mapped fonts to it. No, Essentials has the map. Okay, now here's the fonts it comes with. So here's what, the, there's lots of, the, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. There's basic, it's all basic stuff, but you know, you can always get more fonts. There's lots, and that's where I got into trouble with my computer. I went looking for fonts and somebody got some, some nasty stuff on one of their websites. And I think that's what happened. Well, this it says down there there's a font collection. What does it say? One in the font collection, two. What's that on the bottom? Right there at the bottom. Oh, yeah. They also sell font collections as well. You can add other font collections. Uh, I have one that's called Romantic from the old uh, from the old designers gallery days, and I think I've got a Christmas bunch. So I've got all those old fonts. I don't think I've installed them, but I've got them all. I've got bunches of them. I tend to use what I, because with Creator and uh, Essentials, you can use true type fonts, which are already on your computer. You can, uh, you can make the letters slant, space, change the curve. You can sequence the letter so that it stitches left to right, right to left, or from the center outwards. If you have a multi, needle machine and you have a cap you know a baseball cap uh, mm -hmm. mount baseball caps if you you know because they're rounded like this and if you stitch them this way they tend to shift and it's no longer in the center so John Deere always says if you are doing baseball caps you stitch the middle first one side then the other then one side and the other and that's what this now does is allows you to tell it hey I'm doing a baseball cap and I want it to stitch from the inside out. The main thing this does is it allows you to convert your designs. So if you have, say, if you also have a Janome and you have a baby lock and you have a Viking, you can buy one design and convert it to the three different machines. What it mostly does not let you convert to is the newer Artistas. Now, this just has these listed here, which is CSD all the way to XXX. There's more than that that it'll read now. There are more brands, and so therefore there's, and if you look on the latest update, that it will also read, I think, three of the Artista brands, and it'll read um, the, PH, the PM9s or whatever from our machines. Yeah. It'll read those as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can also save appliques for cutting machines such as the Brother Scan and Cut and the Cry Cut and the Sizzix and the and the mm -hmm. Silhouette Camo, Cameo Silhouette. So, so, and that's what this screen looks like. So it allows you to, like you've got an applique, you can cut out these pieces as well. You can, over here, make it bigger so we can see it. 
<clears throat> you can tell it how far away you want it to inflate the, the fabric so that you can catch it. You tell it how big you want it. You tell so, and then what it, you can also save it to an image so that you can make a placement screen. You know, like a lot of times if you do a quilt and you're doing needle turn or whatever that you print out your whole design then you put your pieces on it and fuse them in you can do that you can do an image as well um and then you can also save it to it i think it saves as an svg file and right here is your you would tell it where you want to save it so you can bring it to your cutting machine and cut your pieces for you i have not done that because you all know my silhouette color <laughs> my silhouette is under the table over there, <laughs> still in the box for, oh, 10 years. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to use it ever. <laughs> okay, I, it's good if you're doing lots of things, and Renee swears by it. She loves to do, the, she loves her scan and cut, but I have no patience for the scan and cut. Okay, and a lot, what, another thing it does really well is it automatically splits embroidery designs for you <clears throat> into multi-hooping, which is really, really helpful. Um, okay, um, you can also, uh, have, there's a project advisor that you can tell it, oh, I'm using a knit, and it'll give you an advice as to whether you use, what kind of stabilizer, what kind of thread, what kind of needle, and any other little things that is a problem with that particular fabric you're working on. Okay, you know, there's also a place where you can store notes, especially if you've got a uh, a business that you can say, oh, I have a particular problem, but I fixed it with this design. So you put a note and every time you use it, you, you don't repeat the same mistakes over again. Um, what's really nice is to be able to print real size embroidery design templates in order to support your scanning or your placement of your designs. It will even print the the little snowman, the pla the placement oh. snowman, it'll print that for you as well. And that helps when you're, you can print it out and plan it all out how you want it to go. Okay, um, you can overlap embroidery designs. This is really neat is that if you, when you merge designs, you bring this design, and I'll, I'll do an example of this one, that you say you have a cloud and a house well, you want the, the house to go in front of the cloud, but they're two different designs. Well, you can get it to sweep and you can get those designs to remove the stitches underneath so you're not making bulletproof embroidery. You can group and ungroup your embroidery projects. You can remove colors. You can sort color stops. You can, you can move your sewing order. You know, like if you want to sew this part, you can move it up and down on the page over here and have it go like you want it. Uh, and my favorite, it has the most important key of all called the undo key. <laughs> undo and redo. I know those really well. And you can have things fit automatically to your hoop. You can align and distribute elements to make interesting things. You can add basting stitches to your embroidery, even though most of our machines have a button on our, our machine that'll automatically put basting for you. These were new that I did not even realize were there. These are called envelopes. And you can, you can put in pre-drawn baseline shapes in there. I'll show you that in a little bit, how you can do that. And you can have whatever text you want fill that space so that it looks like a badge. If you have a creator or stitch artist, you can create your own envelopes too. If you have a designer one, which is a Viking, it'll create their, I guess they're still using floppy disk. This one is neat. You can manage your own embroidery thread collection. We could always do that and create your own thread charts. I don't know anyone on earth who has ever made their own thread chart. <laughs> Not me. Okay, so that's pretty much what it does. All right, now is for enthusiasts. You do not have to have in, in, uh, essentials in order to use enthusiast, but it'd be nice to have it because this does above and beyond things that enthusiast doesn't do. It, what it adds, it'll edit individual stitches. You have to do individual color stops or pieces in in, in the uh, essentials, 
but this ad allows you to pick out stitches and allows you to fix things. And we may not get to much of this tonight because next week we'll do the enthusiast because the enthusiast got a really interest, a lot of stuff it'll do. It'll arrange designs in a carousel, a scatter, or a frame thing, just like you make your own fabric. It'll create new thread colors. I don't see any need to do that. Um, you can add and create your own hoops, and that helps with multi-hooping. Usually we do multi-hooping in two hoops. You do half of it, splits it, and half, the other half is up there. The difference that it does than just splitting the design is it doesn't do a hard split. It does a soft split. So, so like, <clears throat> say it does, this is not, in, this is an applique, but you get the idea. Instead of splitting it right here, it will split part of it in the middle here. It'll stitch some of these stitches. It'll do the bottom half, split it up here, and do some of these stitches so that they link together and you don't see a hard crease, one coming up against the other. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, palette and PE design also split designs, but I think I think they do it better. Let's say if this is a four by four, but you have a design this big, okay? So you would turn that into, well, that's too many. So you could actually turn this into six different embroideries. You set up your own hoop that way. So that it'll divide it automatically into six different sections for you. But you would have to make up your own hoops. Because what you do is you create an overall, my big design fits into this. And then it's going to break into these little bits. So it's nice. It's, it's nice to do that too. So, oh, by the way, this is this month's Mug Rug of the Month. It, it also has a base tube in it. It'll save an image in a, as a PNG file. I think it'll also change, save as a, a JPEG as well. So that if you want to create an image. And then, again, it also goes on Max. Here's the stitch editing, what it looks like. Um, so like, so you can change, you can change characteristics. Like say this is the original design and I want some more down here. Okay, I can change the embroidery, the uh, satin stitch characteristics. This one, I can take these little bits and, and copy and paste them down here, move them where you want them, and then add circular lettering to it. So it's a lot more powerful. And then here's the multiple, you know, here's multi what multiple hooping would look like. You have this part, you have this part, and this in the middle is some done up there, some down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's your bait. That's what basting a hoop looks like. What is, oh, precise positioning. I've never used this. This says if you want to put it at, you would draw a spot and you tell it to go to in the center or so that the top is out. This is nice if you were putting things together into a border because like you would take this one and move it to the below and to the left over here. And, you know, so you can copy, paste, and position into a certain spot. I've never used it. To me, it's easier just to use click and drag. Here's what mirroring looks like. Here's what instant repeat looks like. And you can stagger it or have it straight either way. That's fun. For a car Here's what a carousel looks like. These are fun ones. We might do a clock one of these days. We can use the carousel. Okay, you can scatter it so it'll size them differently if you like and just make something really cute. <laughs> and again, save image. This allows you to print a, uh, a PNG image if you're going to put it on the web or marketing or if you just want to put a picture of it in your on your Facebook page or whatever without actually stitching it. <laughs> I've done that a few times. <laughs> Okay, now the one big thing that it adds is what we call knockdown stitches. If you've ever stitched on a towel and your design is too thin and the loops of the towel work its way through, then you might want to do a knockdown stitch. <clears throat> so what you would do is, this is the original design here, and a knockdown stitch would put this, this sort of background fill around it. And then you're, you stitch on top of that. So now it creates a flat surface instead of, 
putting through, so here's another one. So that would be a knockdown stitch that you can just, just knock down the fibers and your design will come out better. <clears throat> Vance thread editor, I don't use that. <laughs> Same thing with that. No, yeah. See now the advanced properties that you could take a satin stitch and you could make it denser and you can take the design and make the fill denser or, or thinner. So this is a nice thing to use. Okay, so let's just go over a couple of things. This is what the basic screen looks like. So up here at the top, it's telling me that I'm using in brilliance and I have untitled one, nothing's there and the file you're using. Up here at the top, you can see the um, the menu bar and just like in window, everything in Windows, you can do things more than one way. There's lots of ways you can do things. So over here, we'll just go through. This is your design area where you can put your designs into it. This right here makes it scroll up and down. It also has what they call a compass rose. So you click on that. It'll show you all the selection or the hoop. So there's the hoop. So it's going to show me what the hoop looks like. Okay, over here is your, your object panel, which I don't have a design in here, but it's going to show you how everything is going to stitch out in the order it's going to stitch out. And if you click on one of those elements, it's going to show you the properties of that particular thing. Okay, so we'll start. And like I said, there's more than way to, one way to do everything. Here, one thing I do like about this is better, I like better than the PE design, is that when I switch from millimeters to inches, it's just this radial bar. That's all you have to do when you switch back and forth from inches to metric which I, I do a lot. You'll know when you, we did the IQ designer class, I'm always switching it back because when I think of a stitch length, I think in metric. When I think of how big the design is or how big I want a line, I'm going to think inches. So I switch back and forth. What the compass rose does is let me bring up a design. So I'm going to open something. I'm going to pick. I don't care anything. That's last month's so we just did. So when I have the compass rose, what that's good for is when you, you accidentally hit this thing and you can't find it. And then you, you're like, oh my God, what is it doing? It's making me crazy. It's panning all over the place and I can't find anything. So I can go to the compass rose and take it back to my hoop. Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay. Sure in here. That's helpful. Back to my, there, back to the hoop. You can also use the compass rose that if you can see there's a crossbar that I can move it around and find the part that I want. And I can say maybe make it bigger and say I wanted to work on the bottom part of this. I could use this and it's going to take me there to the part that I want to, want to look at. So the compass rose is real helpful. The Luminaire and the Solaris have that pan that mm -hmm. makes me crazy. This is essentially what's on the destiny and the dream machine is those crosshairs to go around and find your design. Makes things a little quicker. From the file, you can do a new page, which starts a whole new. You can have more than one thing open, and that's the biggest improvement over the my PE design and the palette is that you can only have one design open at a time and work on it. You can merge more than one design into one field, but this allows me to open up a whole bunch of different ones. So like I can open up another one. Okay, here's a design. I didn't know what it was. Okay, Aww. Okay. so like, yeah, see now I can see this one's open. This one's open. I can keep opening them until I have the whole screen fill. And what I that is helpful is when I wanted to divine things together, but I don't want to mess one up. I can copy and paste it to another block. Like I can say, okay, over here, and I can come over here and copy and then come to this one and paste it. I meant to paste it there. And then I pasted it. And then if I wanted to bring this one in, I could copy it. I mean, would it, it's silly. I would never do this, but you get the idea. And then paste this one. Now you have them both in here. As versus merge, okay? So it essentially is a merge, but you're doing it the hard way by copying and pasting. Okay, so when you, you can 
do a new new page you can open now if you open a file when you uh, when you save it it's going to save as the same name which means if you're modifying things and you don't want to mess up the other you're going to either open it and save it immediately under a different name or you're going to open a new page and merge it in <clears throat> and of course there's close you can save a stitch and a working file now you have when it's when I go to open, see, I have two different files. One has got the little flower. Now, the little flower you may not necessarily have because that little flower icon comes from my palette. So I don't know what it looks like if you don't have palette. <laughs> but otherwise, it looks like this is your working file. What the working file is, is, let's, well, I've got it all. Right. Let's just open this one. Okay, and open. Okay. What the working file has is, see, it's telling me all of the information. Here's the original image that I put in there. It has the run stitch, a run stitch, a run stitch. And it's telling me the color. And I can control each of these separately, OK? Otherwise, what it does is it's telling you what it is, but it doesn't let you change anything. It's, you can't change, like say if I wanted to turn this into a satin stitch, I could now change this into a satin stitch. Create or open, yeah, see, like I can, see if I want, I won't save it, just remind me not to save it and mess up my files. See, now I could change that because the coding for the stitch, for the color, for the, all the other little micro information that's in there is in the working file. When you bring up a stitch file, a stitch file only has the stitches, and the only thing you can change is the color and the size. There's not much else you can do to it. You can't get to the coding. So therefore, if you save it, you're not going to mess up your original coding. So, so how do you get it to be a, a working file? Uh, a working When you save it, when you go to File, Save as Stitch and Working File, or Save oh, as, oh, oh. if you want to change the name, Stitch and a Working File. Or you can export the outlines. I don't know why. Oh, that would be tr for your cutter. You can merge a working file, which allows you to bring another working file into the same into the same screen. You can um, merge a stitch file, which is just this. Your design. Most of the commercial designs, they're not going to give you the coding. They're just going to give you the stitch file, which means it's got color stitch points. And that's pretty much it. Color and stitch points and jumps and, and uh, commands for cutting thread. That's really all there is. Otherwise, mm -hmm. that's just saying it's an X, Y co coordinate and just keep going. It's not allowing you to change and manipulate it for the most part. Now, with <laughs> enthusiasts, you can a little bit. Now, here's where you can print. I'm going to do print preview. Um, print preview. Okay, because I don't have a printer attached to this. Here's my template right here. See, I can print it. I can also, in my preferences, set tell it what I want it to do. It allows you to mirror it, image it. Say if you're doing something that you're going to do needle turn on top of it, you can print it and have it printed in mirror image so you can cut out your pieces. You can do that too. It also tells you the latest ones that you've used. So you could go quick to the last few you were working on. But over here, this is your open. This is your new page. This is your open. This is your file. Here's your print. Um, and so they're already there. So and that's your saves. OK, then you have the edit one here, which the edit means you can select all, select by color, cut, cut when you select all. No, I could go over here and I have my copy that select. See, notice I hit select all and everything is selected here on the right hand side. And then over here, it allows you to select by color to cut, copy, paste, and delete. You can group and ungroup and ungroup all. And then sequence events allows you to move things up and down on this, this right here. So if I wanted to do one way you could do it is just click on that and just move it down. <laughs> or you could do it up in the menu. Okay. Um, and again, you've got your copy and paste 
undo and redo, which are real important. Back to the screen. Then you have utility and utility allows you to align and distribute. That's when you're wanting to align things. This allows you to align and distribute. Okay, so now what I would do is I'd hit this for selecting all. We do a copy, paste, move one over here. So you put them like this and you wanted them to be even. This is where you would pick them all and align. And I'll just put them all at the top so that it's going to take the top edges and match them up. And close. See, now put them even with each other. Next one. Um, you have color sort allows you to color sort. It does it intelligently. So if you brought in two or three things, I notice I've got lots and lots of colors. It'll do one at a time. If I were to hit color sort, and it's thinking, this is going to mess them all. I wouldn't dare try to stitch this out because it does it intelligently. So if you have one piece fitting on top and another, say it's white and then something over here is white also it's not going to clump those colors together because it knows this one's got to be on top of the other one it's under the other and it won't it does it it color sorts intelligently which is better than moving them up one at a time okay and it takes a while there it goes Okay, there it is. It, it reduced it by 137 color changes. Why it did that, I would never stitch this out, that's for sure, because these are supposed to go in order. But it put them all, all the greens together, all the reds together. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> but it, you get the idea. It actually did sort them. Okay, and then we have... Uh, Base designs. Oh, let me get rid of this one. Delete it. Okay. And I'm just going to move it in the middle. And then if I want to, this is how you put in the basting stitch. This is the base design. And see it added a little, little stitch up here. And if I show how it stitches, see it did a basting stitch before it's before it puts it before the design. It also, here's where your project advisor is, where you can tell it what thread you're using, what color, what type of fabric, and it'll tell you, like if I'm doing this on canvas, it says to, if fabric is heavy, this, this doesn't have any stretch, use a size, a jeans needle size 14 uh, with a 35 weight thread and a tearaway backing. So it, I, you use it a lot when you're first new. I don't, haven't used it for years. Designer one, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to bother because that what it does is it's going to format a disk for you. Okay, send now. Here's where if you wanted to send this to the Solaris or the Luminaire or I think the Altair, there's a couple of them that mm -hmm. have the wireless. This is where you do it, and of course, in the, in the preferences, you would have picked your network and all that stuff. So that's how you send the design directly to your machine. Okay, then we have save to image. Save image saves it as a JPEG file so that you can use it on printing or advertising or whatever. Adding a knockdown stitch. If I were doing that, what it does, here's what it does. You tell it how far, whether you want it to just to go in one direction or if you want it to go two directions. And, and then you tell it how dense you want it the stitch length you want, and and how far outside of the design. I'm going to make this bigger just so you can see it. And then OK. And see, now it's added this knockdown. And again, here, it has done that stitching first. OK, and let me put the stitch, right, stitch simulator on and see it. There's your knockdown stitch. And then it does, then it's got, I've got basting too. And then it does the design. Helpful if you're doing lots of towels. Okay, threads, I don't, um, you can tell it what threads. This is how you make your own thread chart. That That's never, never going to do that. 
I, you know, I just put red. I put whatever red I want in there. <laughs> okay, and then we have uh, baste the hoop. Now, what that's a little different. The basting is going to now. This is a nice thing to use with the magnetic hoops because. What it does is it adds this basting to the very begin to the outside of your hoop, the very first thing. So this is a nice thing because now it's putting your center of your design, the center of your hoop. You can see where it is. It's mm -hmm. right here. And therefore you can put your sticky, if you're going to use sticky or your magnetic hoop, it's right there. Um, it's also good for basting down towels where you've got something really big to base. Because a lot of times with the base, the base just goes around the, the image of what you're going to be stitching. But if you want that whole hoop to be basted down so that it's not pulling out all over <laughs> the place, then you can base the whole hoop. And that's in essentials? That is in essentials. The but the knock down stitch isn't? Knock down is not. Import font, and we're not going to go into, but this allows you to map. I'm going to put them here. This is a, like these are embroidery files, and this is the font that I'm taking it. It automatically put this one to a zero keystroke. There's the key, keystroke. You can also like move it up and down and, and set the base so that the baseline's at the top or through the center. So there's a lot you can do with this. It's, this is a class all into itself. Let's see, we're still utility. Okay, again, you got import font. We did that. I don't have, this one's nothing to split into a hoop. Uh, instant repeat. That's going to, that's the, a lot as the align and distribute. This one might work. Okay, so we have this one. And we're going to mirror times four. Let's see, now I can't see it here. I'm going to put it all to selection. So, see, it automatically mirrored it four ways to you, for you. Huh. Undo. And then the next one is a carousel. And we're making smaller. Here's like, here, it'll also recalculate. Now, this is the enthusiast that totally recalculates it. It's telling me that this has got... It is three and an eighth by two and five sixteenths and has 7,400 stitches. Let's just say we make him really small. And now he's only got 4,800 stitches and he's one and three quarter by one and a half inches. When I go to carousel, there, he's small enough to go in there. So it automatically, you tell it how many pieces you want and the direction, how big you want it to go out auto rotate it and invert this one turns every other one around this can spin them around so you can sit and play with these by the hour the essentials only has mirror and scatter yeah it has mirror and rotate also no it doesn't say rotate um yeah here's rotate right here is right on the machine right on there you can rotate them around you oh on that to, part yeah, but it doesn't it's not under you're rotating here too. There's more it's than not one. under view. No, it's not under. Um, no, not under view. Our utility is where we were. Well, scatter. Yeah, scatter puts all different sizes, and you can tell it, you know, how many you want the size, height, weight. Um, let's make him smaller, maximum. See now that scatters make. It's just a fun little thing to have. Could you do it by copy and paste? Sure. And then resize them and move them where you want. There's always more than there's a way to do lots of things. <laughs> and undo. Alrighty. Um and we did scatter open library folder. That's for copying your fonts and your envelopes and the elements that you have saved over the years from one computer to another. So that's something one rarely does. And of course, under utility, you've got, here's your rotates here. Um, there's your, some of these, there's your mirror images. So like, see that? I don't have them yeah. selected. There, mirror imaging and then up and down. So you have that. Under view, you can change the metric here, but why bother? Because it's a little radio button in the corner. 
Now, this is what you're looking at. A lot of times when something disappears and you like all of a sudden a button's missing, if you go to view, this is controlling your what you can see on your screen. So like over here, if I, if I put draw hoop, it's gone. Like where'd my hoop go? It's over here in view, put it back. So, and zoom is just, you know, you, I use the, this little bar here on the right-hand side most of the time, or I just scroll in and make it bigger on my screen by spreading my fingers like you normally do on the computer. Of course, and then window, I just, you can go to a new page or you can go to a previous one you were looking at. And of course, here's your help. The help is going to, this is your instructions. Your manual is virtually in here, built in here. And I got to do it there. You also, in the help, you have your serial numbers. And here's where you, this is where you would put new ones in. And this is what you have. What I would recommend is I would take something, uh, put it on your phone, because that's where mine are, <laughs> okay? These serial numbers I put on my phone, because if something happens to this computer, I have no idea where the files are to go look for these things. So I put mm. these in, this information on my phone. Because mm. if, your, if your machine totally crashes, <laughs> which has happened and I thought was happening tonight, <laughs> Is if your machine, you can always load your software back into it, but you can't load your files and your serial numbers. People lose their serial numbers all the time. All of my serial numbers for my sewing machines and all my software I have in my phone and I have it written down elsewhere, lots of places. I have a question. Sure. Somehow. Because I've been playing, you know, when you've been doing it, I put it up on my screen. Somehow I erased icons, yes, before that come under file, you know, that shows you. Your... Okay, you, you mean uh -oh. the little icons at the top are missing? And and the undo and the and the okay. redo button. How go do I get? Go to view. Yes. Toolbars and windows that are at the top. Right at the top says reset windows and toolbars. Oh, reset. Thank you. I didn't see that one. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, because yeah. we just want, this is going through them individually, and then you've also got them over here for whole sections. Thank you. A lot of times, these things disappear on me because I will, they'll get so filled up and I'll move them, and then I don't know where they went. They disappeared. Then you can always fit, fix it. Thank you. And the other thing that's in the help is check for updates. You can automatic, it'll automatically check for the latest update. And if you're not sure what update you're on, you hit about, and it's telling me I'm at version 1.173. Okay. And this was, there's probably a new update. I haven't looked because this was updated last in January 22. I'm sure there's more updates and I haven't done it. I haven't checked for a long time. <laughs> I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> I've had enough trouble. Okay, and then of course you have all these icons and these icons are going to change depending on what software you have. Um, so all of them have the, the, the new, the open, the save, the print, copy, paste, undo, redo, and color sort. I think they all have 3D and they all have the density map. 3D just, see, just changes it how thick the imprint is on your screen. See, if I turn the 3D off, you see stitches, which you may want to look at too sometimes. You have the density wire. Let me hit. They all have the density wire and um, right there, if you, ha you have this, if you have, so you can see what's, what's going on. Like where the red is, is showing you I've got some thick stitching right there. Not a whole lot you can do with it though. <laughs> there's your wire design and there's your regular design. All of the all of the pieces have this on it. You know, or even the essentials has got the uh, the density wire. Okay, over here, this is your magnifier. I don't use it, but this can if I want to just look at this section. Yeah, I can. And hit selection, go back to it. Nope. There. Okay. Um, 
Over here is a ruler. This is handy to have so that if you want to know how big is this section. I use this a lot when I'm doing something that has an applique. And I and I haven't stitched it out, so I need to know is this little piece of paper, this little piece of fabric going to fit in that piece? Then I'll go measure it on the screen, and yeah, it'll fit. That's mostly when I use that. Okay, then over here is the sewing simulator, which is really nice. And I'm the simulator is not on the Express module, you know, the one the freebie, but this is helpful here. Okay, I use that. But let's just say, and other things I will use this for, let's just say I wanted um, to make a hat a different color, okay? <laughs> because I can just let it play. Here's your play buttons. So you just let it play. And this is how fast it plays right to the right of it. Okay, but usually what I do is I'll stop it. And I'm just going to want to see how this stitches out. Come here, come down here. Alrighty. I just want I say I want to make that hat a different color. So I'm just going to see where this hat goes. Okay, that's his face. Okay, here's the hat. It stitch the hat. And then I can back up one stitch at a time, which are these little blue arrows. Oop, too far. Okay, then I hit stop. That's going to split the color. Okay, and I'm going to make it a different color. I'll make it brown. Okay. And see now what comes after is now a different color. And I could change if I didn't if I didn't like the color and I say I wanted the hat to be red, I click on that. I can hit color and hit the color bar. And I can tell it what color I want it. See if I want it red. Here's red. Now he's got a red hat. That this is how we had to do colors, sorts, and change things in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> so that that the color I can get a lot done with just the color bar, for the sewing simulator. Okay, this is my selection, and this is just I can pick, just select different elements. If it was far apart, say, I could select this little bit over here. But select is always going to give you a square. Here's preferences. Now, this is where you set your hoops. You tell it what hoops you're using. That tells the hoop. You can make your own hoops in here as well. And if you mess them all up, you can hit reset the defaults and just get the original hoops back. Your display settings tells you whether you want these grid lines to be lines or dots and how far apart you want them. Um, you can change the background color here. Snap to grid is if you're doing like that is always helpful if you're if you're digitizing for um, cross stitch that you want it to go in a certain spot, it'll snap to an intersection on a grid. Graphic scale, this is this is your screen. You do this one time only that you see where it says right here. You measure it and it says here, you move the slider until this is two inches long. And then that's it, you know, that you only have to do that once. The mouse wheel, you can tell it if you, I don't have a mouse right on this. I'm running off the touchpad. But you can tell your mouse what you want it to do. You can have it automatically check for updates when you run it. It'll only run once a day. Ghost mode means that if you delete something here or you put a lock on it, it'll uh, you can it'll show a light gray. I don't use that either. Auto auto recover means it'll save. Here it's telling me it's going to save everything I've done every ten minutes. How many of you have been doing stuff and you do it for an hour and a half and then you hit the wrong key and everything's gone? Yeah. That's happened many times. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one is your jumps that you can tell it the definition of your where you want it to put your jump stitch. The sewing machine is automatically, most machines will automatically set that jump stitch if it detects something about approximately one half, one quarter to one half an inch away from each other then it'll insert a jump stitch. You can change that definition, set the minimum, 
And if you have a stitch length that's so long, you can fix that too. You, so reason is that I would sometimes will set this really big if I am digitizing a satin stitch for fringe work. Here is you can, can tell it what you nor what is your normal machine that it's going to take every design and put it into PES for you. Hmm. Okay, and then stitch format, you can tell it here's the ones it does. So it's um, there's quite a few of them that it will convert to. Notice it does not convert to any of the artistas. Printing and adjustments, I've never messed with that, but that you can change things. Like if you've got a design that's really, this is like when you size it. Sometimes you size it and you see fabric through it. You might want to increase that, that gap reduction and then take a minimum stitch length and the maximum stitch length. I've never had problems, so I've really never messed with this don't really need it okay um this one over here is only on the enthusiast what i love about this one is that it allows you to fit to take let's make it bigger i'll show you and i'm going to turn it off 3d so you can see it better you see all your stitches here so like say if i looked in this little spot here and i'm seeing fabric showing through but everything else is fine I don't need to change sensitivity but I need to add some stitches in here so I can click on a particular stitch and insert after and then click click just add a few more stitches in here I've done this many times and now I'm adding stitches now it's closed the gap and like another thing now when you've got enthusiast I've got this lasso and I don't want this here and I'm just get a little closer here. And now it gets rid of all of those. You can also pick a whole bunch of them at one time. Move all of these stitches. And then I move them. It moves them as a group. And now I take one and then move the whole thing at once. So it allows you to move whole sections out of the way if you wanted to. Okay, you can also delete. Here I can ensure ties in 3D. And I would take um, this and where'd my lasso go? There we go, lasso. I'm just going to put a hole in it. Delete. Okay, I didn't really do a hole, but you got the idea. Okay, um, this over here is now. It, we won't talk about this one. This one is Creator. There's Creator 1, which has got basic stuff. And you, can, if you have these, you can do a lot with this. And then here's two, which have a little more functionality. And we'll talk about these later. And then here's the three, which is the full version, which is a whole panel of stuff that I've never used. It's graphic stuff, which I don't understand anyway. Okay, then you have Merge Designs. Merge Designs opens you up to these libraries and you have this is like the outlines you can use you have these are yeah so you've got different shapes and frames and all kinds of stuff you can you can use pre-existing shapes and designs you also have um the envelopes are really nice to use. I love, I've gone crazy over those envelopes. We'll do them next time. These are, they always have shared designs from a blog every once in a while. And so here's some free designs when you download them. What I don't have on here is if you have, which I didn't download uh, because I don't use it, is if you have the AccuQuilt with all the different shapes, there is a library that you can automatically bring all those shapes in and have them here to use and then turn it into an applique so you can you can use all of those shapes that you can get with the AccuQuilt, which I also have in a closet. <laughs> okay, uh, then here's my lettering. Let me go to a new page. And you have lettering. This is the basic lettering. So here's the letter as you put it, as you look at it. Then you have fonts. It comes with the basic 14. I know block is always one of them. 
uh, wherever you see something like that, that is a BX file. And what I don't have are some mapped ones. No, I don't have any mapped ones in here. I don't think so. Nope. I, um, yeah, some of these are mapped. Or these are actually from their, their font collections. So like all of these uh, Ro Roman ones and the or the old English, the MGMs, a bunch of, I bought a few of them, but I don't use them very often. But you've got, lot. I have lots and lots of fonts. <laughs> but like I so said, where you see this, this is going to be one of those BX files. Okay. Um, you can do, I'll just leave that for here. You type, in, you have a choice of doing um, multi-text, which means you do more than one line at a time. You can do a single row and you can also turn things into a circle. And here, I, if I want to change the font, I just click on it while it is highlighted and it'll change the font automatically. Uh, you can, here's your style. You can have it go vertical, diagonal, slant. Um, these, this is monogram styles. Um, the, in some basic envelopes. And then you have the order. This is the order it stitches. Let me put it back to regular. So like if you were doing a regular here, this one is how it's going to stitch out. This one would be stitched from the left, right, then center. So if you want to do the sides, then the middle. Then you have right, left, then center, then center, left, and right, center, right and left, and then you could have it stitch in reverse order. Don't know why you'd need that. Okay, this over here changes the slant. So you can move it, slants it back and forth. This changes the spacing. This takes a curve if you want it to curve, like this curve. I don't know, I don't have it. I don't have it on a curve. This is if I picked a curve. Let's do that one, okay? And this is how big or small the curve you want it to grow. So you, you can change one end and the other. Same thing with this one, the bottom. That changes the bottom one. A little different. Oh, you can do it numerically. You can now. What I don't use those very much because when I click on a letter, I have all these little things jumping up over here. So this allows me to change move one letter at a time. Mm. I can rotate one letter at a time. This moves it up and down only, or that moves the whole, no, the arrow moves it up. The rest up and down. So if you wanted them to slant, this slant, this curves the entire thing. And you can do that for each. You can make all of these letters a different place. You can also, while I have this selected, I can make this letter, let's make this letter bigger. Now move it over here and I wanna make it bigger. I can change its color. Slightly different. And so you can, you can really manipulate your text. I need my grid lines back, <laughs> view. Grid lines, there, back. And I have to put my hoop back on. I lost my hoop there. Okay, I'm going to hit these and delete them. So to use the envelopes, and you can I, you can use the envelopes in the enthusiast. So I'm going to pick my envelope. The envelopes is only in the enthusiast, right? It's in all of them. It's what? It's in all of them. Where is the envelope? It's up here on this little flower thing. So I pick my envelope, and here's an envelope I can use. And you pick it, okay. And then you go and put in your letter. And I'm gonna use block. It doesn't matter which one I use, letters. And um, that's fine, I'll use that one. And so what, how to make this fit inside that envelope. And the only thing that really works is this inner black line. The outer line, you can take that out if you don't want it. But what you have to do is you have to change this letter because see it says envelope one. So I have to take letters and put a one beside it and then click outside and it should. 
Okay. You don't like that. Oh, it's because it's got to be regular. Sorry. Everything has to be back to normal. There we go. There. And see how it automatically put those letters inside? Uh, and then say, if you didn't want that, <laughs> I could take that and hit the delete key and it's gone. Uh, I'll keep that one. I'll delete that. And say, I don't want one of these borders. Okay. Say now I've just got the letter in there and I don't have to stitch that. There we go. That works good. Then over here, this is how you remember we had merge over here. We had what? We had merge working file or merge a stitch file. This is also here how you merge that I could go find that little guy. Find something else. Easter. I don't know. Okay, we'll put that in there. And I'll merge that and hit import. And now it brought it in. And now so this would be cute. I could if I take this, I could take I could theoretically take my stitch file here and take this one egg out. Okay, now I've got that egg out. I didn't want it there. And now, okay, and so now we've got a new design. And they're merged together, and you would save them. Okay. All right, now down here is where you change from inches to metric. Here it's telling you how big it is. You can make things bigger by using the handlebars. But if I wanted that exactly four inches tall, I could make this um, it's inches. We'll make that, um, maybe I say I wanted it to be seven inches tall. And then I hit enter. It made it seven inches tall. Okay. Um, and this locks it so that if you have this lock uh, open, or unlocked, I could make it smaller this way. Okay, there. And these right here rotate 90 degrees, or you can tell it I want it to be 45 degrees. There. This mirror is in vertically and horizontally. So that was horizontally than vertically. If I wanted to make this fit, let me move the put, turn the poor guy around. I'm going to take this one out. Okay. And say now I have this design and I want to center it in the hoop. So this right here centers it in the hoop. This one next to it makes it fit to hoop. And I think that's on all of them as well. It'll make it fit in that five by seven hoop. Usually it gives it a little bit of room. This right here is put a line into distribute. So that was the same as we had over there. This one here, it removes hidden stitches. So oh, I don't have to be copy and paste and move here. We have two of them. Okay, so if I hit here, And I hit remove hidden stitches, and that's all on of them. See how it takes the stitches out from underneath? And Essentials does have that. What is different is that you have to do it every time. So like if you have to hit remove hidden stitches. And there it is. As soon as I let this go, it puts the stitches back. You can do the same thing in this way, and this one Essentials has it, which is the broomstick. And then again, see it, it, they're the same thing, just two different ways of doing things. This one here is your project advisor with the question mark. There's your aligning the text. It's another one that I don't use. At the bottom, wherever I put my cursor, it's telling me that it is, I am zoomed at 68% and the cursor is, is the placement my cursor is. Then over here, it's telling me what hoop size I'm using 
how big the design is right next to it, and then how many stitches are in the whole, whole well, this is how many stitches in each one. I can hit select all over here. So now the whole thing is telling me it is too big. I see a red thing. That means it's not fitting in the hoop. If it if it's yellow, then it tell it'll fit in the hoop if you rotate it. It tells you it'll fit just not the way you have it oriented. And then how many color stops it has. Right now there are there are six colors, but 12 color stops. So right over here it says six slash twelve. That means that there are six actual colors, but some of them repeat. So there's 12 separate color stops. This is a commercial design. It is not a working file. It's a stitch file. Then here, all it lets me do is it will let me change the satin stitches to 0%. It doesn't, it's at zero because it's there's nothing here. But if I want to increase that stitching, so let me, Let's see, it has 4,752. If I increase that fill, it actually made it denser in that section. I don't have a satin stitch here, but if I had a satin stitch, this would change how big that satin stitch would be. It, did, it didn't make any changes to it. Okay, and then you can prevent a sweep. So like if you have, remember we had the little, uh, hidden stitches if I click that it won't allow that to be taken away if, if another design is put on top of it this prevents this button from working this filters you can use the automatic settings you can limit the density so on the essentials this is all you can do is to limit the density and then you can declump. What declump is, it's taking out where you see a bunch of little stitches in one spot, where like where you've got a bunch of tie-offs all together, and the, it'll declump means there's too many stitches in one little spot, and it'll move, it'll take some of those out, and then remove underlap. That is, if you have more than one design. So, so if you even if you have prevent sweep, you can remove the underlap if it's something else is underneath of it. Okay, this one's got a satin stitch here. So this is my working file. So I will open the working file. And then when I pick, um, like this was a lace stitch, it's telling me it's a lace stitch. I have it would have to be in the creator for it to do anything though. But it's telling me what kind of stitch it is. And there's all the coding from creator. So a working file will just allow you to change what you did in the software. Anybody have any questions? If you go to YouTube, regular YouTube, and you and you in the search engine you put in in brilliance, there are tons. There's hundreds of videos specifically doing every little part of every little program. Lisa Shaw is the one who uh, who does those videos, and hers are absolutely excellent. If you're like me and have the basic uh -huh. essentials, that the next thing would be the enthusiast to get pretty much enthusiast yeah yeah i think that'd be a good one the enthusiast has got some good stuff if you want to do editing now if you're wanting to do uh digitizing you could go with creator one two or three okay so i'm going to go ahead and just, let me just sign off on facebook and we'll see you guys next week next week we're going to go more into the enthusiast and we're going to do some practical exercises. What's so much easier than IQ Designer? Um, the principles are the same. What you've learned in IQ Designer is going to be very helpful when you go into starting to do digitizing on a screen because it's going to be a whole lot easier to do.